All right, let's. It's time for us to just keep on going and roll right into the Duracoat Finish Firearm of the Week. All right. Duracoat Finish Firearm of the Week brought to you by our friends at Duracoat Firearm Finishes. Makes sense, right? So we have been we promised to do this, and we were kind of teasing you a little bit with it last week. Uh, so we did the three pistols, one can challenge. And not really a challenge, but we did three pistols, one can with uh, slightly darker black. Last week, we talked about having the slightly darker black in our hot little hands from our buddies at Duracoat. And uh, so I'm going to hold it up for the audience. You can switch cameras so we can get a close-up on this. Uh, this is my G48. This is, And you're like, wow, it's so dark I can barely see it. I know, it's slightly darker black. Uh, what I did, well, this gun, I've been carrying this gun every single day for basically three-plus years now, probably a little more than three years. Uh, the Well, however old this gun is, I got one that year. So the year that they released these, I got this one, and it is the single column, nine millimeter, uh, basically about the same size uh, lengthwise and height wise as a Glock 19, but it's thinner. Uh, it's a little bit lighter. Uh, actually, it's a skosh longer. When, when Jared disassembled his G19 and I disassembled this one, we discovered that the, uh, that the barrel of the 48 is just a little bit longer than the 19 uh but i do have uh, if you can see those i don't know if you can see it there you go oh yeah you can see it as i wiggle it around you can see the uh, the super bright uh neon safety green accurate front sight from night vision on there uh yeah so the point is is even if it's a glock or or, or any gun Glock finishes hold up really well, but the fact is, if you carry a gun in a holster every single day, year after year, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, you're going to get holster wear on it. That's just going to happen, and it'll you know it wears on the edges and the uh, the slide lock right there on Glocks. You can tell people who actually carry their Glocks because the slide lock component is silver. Am, am I lying or am I dying, Jared? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's absolutely true. Ours were both the same. Uh, we carried both our guns for about the same amount of time, and both of our slide locks were because these don't get the uh, the slide locks don't get the the Glock Tenifer finish. They just get like a quick passing of black paint in the factory, yeah. and uh, or whatever they put on them. Uh, so we completely disassembled our guns. I did a G forty eight. We did Jared's G19, and then I knew I was going to have a little bit of, of uh, Duracoat left over. So I uh, disassembled my Canic, the TP9 SF Elite, this SF Elite, which is essentially the Canic version of the Glock 19. They're essentially the same size. Both of them hold 15 rounds, yada, yada. And uh, that one has, an in, has a... Uh, uh, slide finish from an inferior finish company and it was it was worn it had the it had the wear marks you know the holster wear marks and so i thought what the heck i'll i'll disassemble that one and uh, uh, we use one can of the can in can slightly darker black duracoat and we were i did the we did the frames the slides uh and the barrels uh, and the barrels. We do the frames, the slides, and the barrels. Uh, I am not going to. I'm gonna. We did that this weekend, and I'm gonna leave this be. I'm gonna let it cure and get it super hard before I start carrying it again. I got another gun. I got a different clock that I'm carrying as my my everyday carry now. Uh, and that is my advice to you guys. Now, obviously, after an hour or two, you can touch them, and they're you know they're not sticky or anything like that. But you really want to give the Dirk because you don't have to bake Duracoat. That's one of the great things about Duracoat is you do not have to put it in an oven at 250 degrees or 300 degrees or whatever. So you can do optics. You can do electronic, you know, 
optics or you can do magnified optics or scopes or whatever. Whereas some of the, the old company, the old ones where they're like, oh, yeah, just put it on and stick it in your oven at 250 degrees for an hour, which is fine. But I don't want to take my $1,000 loophole scope, paint it and stick it in an oven, you know, a 250 or 300 degree oven for an hour. <laughs> I think Leupold would frown on that. They were like, mm, how about you don't do that? Um, so with the uh, the Duracoat, you do not need to. Now you can. If you have a pro shop, uh, if you have a professional finishing shop, you can hang the stuff in an oven and, you know, for half hour, hour or whatever and harden it up. No problem. You know, Bob's your uncle. Bing, bang, boom. Uh, but uh, yeah. If you're doing it at your house and you're using the Canon can technology, uh, just do it and then res <laughs> discipline yourself and leave the gun alone for a little bit. <laughs> just discipline yourself, leave the gun alone, let it harden. Then when it's hardened, then you can go and start carrying it again, shooting it again, and so on and so forth. So there you go. That is the three can. And, and we did have, after doing three pistols, slides, uh frames barrels you know and then doing the the touch-up coats and so forth we still did have a little bit left over but that's okay it's better to have a little bit left over than to run out uh what what duracoat will tell you is one can per long gun and then uh one can for two handguns but i mean these are little handguns and they're little you know concealed carry guns so they're not that big they don't have that much surface area on them uh, would you say that it was a successful project? Or? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I would say so. And what is the most important thing to do if you're going to refinish a gun, Jared? Uh, strip it first to make sure that there's no oil or dirt or anything on it. That's right. You got to do the prep. You got to put in the prep time. Get all the oil and the grease and the hoppies number nine and the CLP. Get all that crap off of there. Use your, sl your uh, true strip cinnamon. Uh, and they have a product called no sand. Now you can sandblast if you have a sandblasting container, uh, sandblast box, you can, you know, sandblast it. But if you don't have that, they have a product called no sand that you can rough it up. We might have some new listeners that are wondering how you're using cinnamon to <laughs> strip the stuff off of the cinnamon is my favorite stripper name. That's right. I'm going right. to call you True cinnamon. Is, Do I look like a stripper? Yeah. yeah but in, in a good, good way. Yeah. The good way. In a good way. I'm just going to call you cinnamon. 